three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. Everybody, this is your the real pineapple. I'm starting to fall asleep. <laughs> Damn edible! This is your humble host Hunter here. Um, oh my god, we have a review, and this is the last official uh, new release review we're releasing until I'm on a uh, a mild break, uh, about three weeks, which will be. Nice. Um, but thank you so much for support. As always, we have a review here for the Batman. Uh, just to get this out of the way, it is spoiler heavy. Um, so if you've not seen the Batman, um, please, please, please do like pause this. Take the three, three and a half, probably three and a half hours after you see trailers. Um, (laughs) take, take the time, go see it, come back and listen. But, you heard a different voice there in the background. You've uh, she's been on the show before uh, with the, uh, helped out with the Shazam review. I know there's other. Birds she- of Prey. Thank you. Yeah, Birds of Prey. Um, pretty much, if it's a DC movie, she, there's a very good chance she's on it. Um, I've got my friend uh, Wally here. Wally, how are you? Hanging in there. Um, thank you for braving the snow. I appreciate that because it's snowing in Reno in fucking March for some reason, which. Why? Um, By the way, it was 70 degrees last weekend. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was like sunny, too, which, again, the fuck. But we are talking about the Batman. We are talking about Matt Reeves, that brilliant son of a bitch. Uh, If you've listened to the podcast for a while, you know the reference I have for Matt Reeves, uh, director of Cloverfield, which is such a wonderful monster movie and there's not been a Godzilla movie that has been made that is as good as Cloverfield come at me don't care um don't, he, don't count the sequels uh yeah, th- yeah those especially um but l- let me in um he was a producer on 10 Cloverfield Lane which is a fucking brilliant movie until the last five minutes uh and then of course the um the Donald Planet of the Apes uh trilogy as I mentioned with Andy Serkis who should have been off. Uh, should have been uh, nominated for an Oscar, but that's a whole other conversation. So we uh, we were gonna we were gonna get a Batman film starring uh, Ben Affleck. What well, was that supposed to be like four years ago, three years ago, three or four years ago? That was the sometime uh, right before BVS and Justice League completely tanked all of Warner Brothers' plans. I also want to just say, yeah, Hunter and I saw this movie last night. We did super late. Yep. And we have not at all talked about it because nope. that's his style. He does not want any, not even like that was good, that was bad. Nope. Neither of us have any idea on the other one's opinion of this movie quite yet. That so is, yep. we will be learning about each other in real time today. Yeah. And I, I, I will be the first to admit I'm a little concerned <laughs> what you might think about this. So I will just throw it out there. Um, my, 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 my partner will t- would, would tell you that... When I saw the trailer at Fandom, because DC nor Marvel will be showing anything at Comic Con <laughs> moving forward, you can just get rid of that pipe dream. But I remember seeing the trailer at Fandom and going, "Holy fucking shit! This this could be the Batman film I've been waiting for." Because I will be the first to admit, uh, I went through and I rewatched Nolan's trilogy. I love Begins. I love Batman Begins. I actually think bit of a hot take. I think it's a better film than The Dark Knight, start to finish. I uh, actually, it's my favorite too. I won't. I don't know that it's objectively better, but it's my favorite. Okay, that that's fair. Um, I, I just there's some there's like a charm and like a newness to it. Especially you have to remember that really did reset comic book movies as a whole. Yeah. Like go and watch Batman Begins compared to like a whole bunch of other uh, Marvel movies that came after, and watch how they follow that formula of like the suiting up sequence, the learning sequence, the kind of the way the villains are introduced. It's it kind of introduced a whole new formula, and it really brought the Dark Knight back to dignity after Schumacher. So. Yeah, well, it, well, it's interesting because we get Iron Man, and I can't like we get Iron Man begins within what four months of each other, if memory serves. Like, so that was, was it within four months. I, feel I, like, I look it up because I think Iron Man was a, like a year later. Am I crazy? Uh, I don't know. I'm getting, I'm getting fucking old. No, I, I trust me, I get it. Um, 
Oh, my bad. Uh, so, Begins was 05, Iron Man was 08, so I was way off. My bad. Um, but I, I don't think they were the same year, so I, I really do think Begins, particularly with Iron Man, like, like watch the scenes in Begins where he's crafting his costume and his tech, and then yeah. Iron Man, they're very, almost kind of shot for shot in some aspects. Yeah. Like, it really did kind of set a new formula in motion, and again, it really just kind of brought comic back, mo- comic book movies back into prominence like you can really thank christopher nolan love him or hate him however you feel about dark knight dark knight rises and you know the snyder movies and all that that he produced on you can't discount what the man did to bring kind of the superhero genre back into prominence so i wouldn't say he brought back to the pro what i would say is that he he developed a more realistic style which i think is to the improvement and the detriment to the, of the of the genre which is a whole other conversation but there's a balance to be struck there. yes but what he did with uh bale especially bale? Uh, 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 uh christian oh, bale okay. uh, uh, as a uh, yeah not not what he did with bane but like what he did with christian bale um that bruce wayne works so well his batman i think is good but again it's a whole other conversation but Nolan does Begins, which is a great film. Does Dark Knight, uh, gets Heath Ledger, you know, R.I.P. Gets him an Oscar. Um, <clears throat> Dark Knight's an incredible film. Makes uh, Warner Bros. over a billion dollars. Like it, it's a, it's a huge hit for them. And then we get Dark Knight Rises, and that's where for me, just even as a Batman fan, I kind of went, oh, this is kind of the risk you take of going dark and not having the pieces around to support that because begin because rises just kind of falls into this void but a lot of it's because no one doesn't really like to write female characters strongly and was- i think with rises also the big flaw is and this will be a recurring theme is that you have to understand like you can't just read a couple comics and grasp like the characters in the lore yes you have to kind of have at least someone on the set who grew up with this shit, yep. knows these people, knows how they act, knows where they come from, and knows what you can and can't change to avoid pissing people off. <laughs> yeah, so, that's actually a really good way to put it. With, like, that will, I will say, with Batman Begins, as much as I, it's my favorite of the trilogy, again, I'm not even going to say it's the best. I think probably, on the whole, The Dark Knight is a more exciting and probably cohesive film. Okay. But uh, Begins just has a special place in my heart just for kind of really revitalizing interest, I think, in the entire character. But my big issue with Begins was uh, Ra's al Ghul. Yeah. Um, and... Then when they revisit it in Rises with, quote, Talia, who is not Talia. Yeah. Talia, a name only. Yeah. Um, Because she is also, um, I don't even think I've told you this, she's actually one of, I think, my favorite, most interesting and dynamic characters in DC. She's got got a lot going on. There's so much fun you can have with her. Well, we talked about her a lot in, like, uh, like connection with, like, Damien and, like, like, but... Damien all the way. I love Damien. It's it's frustrating, though, because when you think about the realism that no one brought when you go that route, you handicap yourself in so many of the rogues gallery that you can use because it, well, it, but, but the, the Al Ghuls are not one of those handicaps. You can write that in a realistic setting. So, so, but you know, no, I mean, you can, but it's like, you can't really use Mr. Free. You can't really use Ivy. You can't like a lot of his rogues kind of go off the, uh, you know, you kind of have to push to the side. And I think what with Nolan with his Bane, while I think, while I'm a huge Tom Hardy fan, I mean, he's so dreamy, but while I just, while I just am a fan Watch of Bronson it. Bronson if you haven't seen it. Right. Oh yeah, he's great. But like, what, 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 while I'm a huge fan of his, something that I personally wanted for a Batman film is, cause like, Dark Knight Rises, or Dark Knight is, it is a detective film, but like, Batman kind of like, he has that one thing with the brick and kind of scans it and that's kind of it. There's not like a whole lot of like, detective work really going no, on no i totally agree and um, yeah so uh, we should probably segue into the film exactly we have, like, talk about yeah right <laughs> but but just to give some like so matt reeves was supposed to direct affleck originally batman and people close to affleck his inner circle went dude you're kind of drinking yourself into an early grave <laughs> to play bruce wayne you kind of need to to stop and so you know everything kind of was blown up and we didn't really know where we were going um, with a new Batman film. And so Reeves, you know, says, hey, I'll rework the script and all that jazz. 
uh, or because Affleck had written his own script. And we get Robert Pattinson brought on. And, you know, I can already, like, when he was cast, I still remember everyone was like, oh, here we go. Twilight's going to be Batman. I'm like, as someone who just did a review of the Twilight franchise, I refuse to call it a saga. But as, <laughs> as someone who just did a re-review of those, um, Pattinson's pretty fucking emo in that. I mean, if you were dating Bella, you would too. But he... but Casting weird, controversial actors as Batman is kind of a trend these days. That is true. Because I remember when Affleck got cast, and I was kind of like, ah, okay. And and I think Affleck was, was the victim of bad, of, of bad scripts. I think he actually did a lot more with... I think he would have been a great as the older kind of Frank Miller jaded Dark Knight. Um, yeah. Because also, I don't know if you guys know this, but Affleck's a huge nerd. He is, yeah. He loves comic books. Um, very much like Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill's a huge nerd. Yeah, builds computers. Yeah, yeah Cavill, Cavill's plays a WoW shit. all the time. Yeah, Cavill's a shit. But, but I was so happy when Ka- uh, Pattinson got cast because uh, I love Good Time. The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse is, like, I still... Oh, my God, The Lighthouse. So I was so bummed I couldn't find... A, that would probably be my number 12 favorite film that year. I, I, I fucking love The Lighthouse. He and Willem Dafoe are so good. They really are. And, and Pattinson It's so just, weird. Like, you'll, it'll take you a second. You're not going to know what you're watching right away, but it's worth it. Stick so, with it. It's not a bad thing, though, but it's, it's on Amazon Prime. You should watch it if you haven't seen it. But Pattinson being cast, I... You can check my Facebook. I even said, I was like, I think Pattinson will go down for me... And that's the key distinction for me as my favorite live action Bruce Wayne Batman combo. Because people, that's always kind of a thing with the Batman films. It's like someone, the actor that gets usually either good good in one of the roles. Like Keaton's, I think, is really, I really like Keaton's Bruce Wayne quite a bit. His Batman, eh, it works, but I'm not crazy about it. Um, Kilmer, I think, is actually a really good Bruce Wayne. As a Batman, he's just like... Kilmer could have been great as both if he had a better script. I actually yeah. really like Val Kilmer as an actor. By the way, he's got a documentary out. And it's it's really just incredible. Good. Yes, it is. Um, also, see him in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Dude, yes. fucking cool. Yes, he is. I actually, yeah, Val Kilmer has had a rough career. I know he's the butt of a lot of jokes, but... Uh, but no, I think that if if he had had a better script, he could have very easily been the best of the bunch. And I think Clooney, like in '09, <laughs> I think Clooney in '09 could have been great okay. at both. Like I, because that was what '98, '99. We got Batman oh, Robin, gosh. and so I just rewatched that with my partner because my partner had not seen it because she's not a Batman fan. Because like we had the whole Joker discussion of you why does Batman it... Forever or Batman and Robin. So actually, so I have not rewatched forever. I rewatched Batman and Robin, and that's the worst of the two. I, so I stand by this. It is one of the greatest comedies that's ever been made. Batman and Robin as a comedy is fucking brilliant. As a Batman film, it is a fucking abortion, and I fully acknowledge that. But I just love a I can't what is it. Uh, Chris O'Donnell? Chris O'Donnell. Yeah, as... 35-year-old Robin. Yeah, the 35-year-old orphan. I fucking... <laughs> it's... Oh, it's so good. It's so wonderfully bad. And even, even um, like, Uma Thurman in that is just... Oh, man. You know it's... what? That is that is basically what you'd get if you made a movie off of Adam West Batman. I mean, you're not wrong. Like, I mean, it's really not any sillier than Bat Shark Repellent, but, but that movie's insane. So... We, so focus, we, focus, so, focus, so, focus, Mr. Edible. So, 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 so we, right, so we, rude, so we get, so we get here. I don't even know where to start with my love from this movie, because, you know, I, I don't have the script of the DC Apology Tour I normally go on in front of me, you know. Well, DC actually has been churning out some pretty good shit. They lately. have. You don't have to go on the Apology Tour anymore. They, 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 they have. Like, so it's, it's almost like when you get out of a bad relationship and you're like dating someone, you're like, Oh man, you might be really good for me, but you still have that trauma. Like, like suicide squad is still fresh enough in my mind. BVS. I'm like, Oh God, you could turn back into this shit. But like, we got the suicide squad, which, uh, which I, none of you, not enough of you watched because, yeah. Oh my God. See it more. That watch was it more. such a great movie. You guys, come on. So, so I will drop this, uh, this, not even a hot take, but I will spoil my best of list for this one thing. No way home is not on my list. The suicide squad is. That's all I will I've say. Seen and, it so many times. Um, I can't stop rewatching that much. I own the, I own the steel book and I just rat catcher too. Just, uh, you're, you must be protected at all costs. But, 
Um, but between the Suicide Squad, between like um, Shazam, between Shazam, the Snyder Cut, come on, be honest. Ah, uh, C plus. I'm not gonna go crazy. <laughs> but between <laughs> between Shazam and the Suicide Squad and Peacemaker, um, it feels like DC starting to get it. Like now, I will. Well, be- they're starting to stop the producers from trying because that was what ruined the first Suicide Squad is the producer. Uh, you know, meddling. Yeah. Now they're just letting people kind of take the reins a bit. And it turns out when you're not worried about what's marketable, people can actually turn out a pretty decent story. Well, it's also like when you're not trying to rush like uh, a universe and it feels like they're kind of like, they really should have just done what I've been goddamn saying. They should have done. Just take the crisis CW of it and go, everything's in its own universe. We don't care. And it feels like they're, kind of doing that at this point and going like we don't really care if this all connects which which, which really ties into the comics yeah <laughs> so, which, which honestly like, like I no even, one cares what, like everyone's doing their own fucking thing in the comics too I, I tweeted this a couple months ago I said if DC came up to me and was like just waved their hand and went multiverse with everything that's good I'd go you know what fine like you know at that's this basically point, what they're doing now they're trying to take an everything is canon approach in DC at this time like in the comics? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we'll see. There they're, you go. Even better. They're introducing another whole thing where uh, it's headache inducing. I'll have to explain it to you because oh, I don't want to derail this entire thing. But. Fair enough. But I, I'm happy they're just kind of going like, you know what? We're going to just make shit that works for, like, that works. And Matt Reeves has created, I think, the best live action Batman film that's been made. I, I'm i still debating in my head because I... I you know, we saw this, what, 12 hours ago? Something like that. Something like that. I'm still debating if it's better than Mask of the Phantasm. Because that is my personal... I think that is the best is Batman like film. action? No, it, it, yes. But I'm saying overall. I don't know if it's better than that. Like, I still need to kind of think on that. But to kind of just jump in here, I'm just going to go th- through the line on each character. Uh, the first shot of Paul Dano's Riddler, so you know Paul Dano from 12 Years a Slave, most likely that son of a bitch, uh, you know, from There Will Be Bud, Blood, Looper. Looper's great, too. But Paul Dano, always, he has the most punch, one of the most punchable faces I've ever seen in my life, just whenever I see him. Right up there with Pete Davidson. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. Stay away from Kanye, Pete. But when, but when... <laughs> But whenever I see Paul Dano, I just really, like, my fins, my fist goes, balls into a fist on instinct. I, I fucking hate Paul Dano in the best way. The first shot of him, the Riddler, as the Riddler, genuinely scared me. I was like, oh, Jesus! Like, it's, this movie is borrowing, I'd say pretty heavily, or, or at least heavily influenced by The Long Halloween. It's definitely influenced by Zodiac. Like, that's not even... Very like, much borrows from the long Halloween. Like it is, it, like they are not even hiding that shit. Which I mean, it's not a bad thing. But the movie starts off with the Riddler killing someone, and really brutally too. And for PG thirteen movie, they push this about as far as you can without crossing the R, which I thought was really impressive. Yeah, this is because... an actual PG thirteen that means something. And I like to slap that label on the most fucking. Disney-fied, G-rated, stupid crap ever these days. Well, because this, this is a genuine PG-13, whereas like, be careful taking your kids well, to this yeah, because there's a lot. Of which, comedy. by the way, the amount of people who had their kids there with them last night, I'm like, y'all, like, like they put out the ratings ahead of time for a reason. Like, don't take your seven-year-old to this shit. Like, well, I mean, I can't blame them. PG-13 hasn't meant anything for years. But see, I can blame parents because you should look up what the rating... Like, I'm looking at it here on IMDb. Some suggestive material. Okay. Drug content. Not great. Strong, disturbing content. That should be the one that goes, hmm, seven-year-old probably should find a babysitter. Like, don't don't take your kids to this. Like, I remember I saw people taking their kids to Joker when I saw it with my partner. I'm like, y'all, like... Stop, like, read up on what, why a movie... I remember when I like, saw Deadpool in theaters, there was a guy with this kid there. Yeah, there, I, I saw kids... <laughs> they in left the, during the sex scene. I, well, there you go. I saw kids in line for Tropic Thunder. It's like, don't, like, look up the ratings. But Paul Dano's Riddler, whenever he kills someone, and he kills several people in this movie, I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is dark in the best way, and... Before I throw it to you, the last thing I'll say real quick, Gotham seems like the worst place in the world to live. Like, this is like, like, even Detroit would be like, man, Gotham sucks. Like, this looks 
horrible. So I, I would like to chime in on the things that I liked in this movie. Okay, go ahead. One, I think it has the strongest intro of any Batman movie I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. The uh, the bat signal in the sky, and then there's just um, cuts to a bunch of criminals in Gotham doing various things, you know, graffiti, mugging, holding up mini marks, all that. Yeah. And they see the signal, and they instantly, like, there's, like, a dark alley that they're instantly kind of, like, they shrink back. Like, there's waiting for him to descend on them. Yeah. I thought that was masterful. The soundtrack during that entire scene was masterful. I was so fucking pumped for the first five minutes of this movie. Okay. And I pretty much hated the rest of it. No! I So I had to feel... Because so, there was one moment where I, I, I heard you sigh and in my head. I was like, oh no, she doesn't like this nearly as much as no. I do. So, okay, here's my uh, okay. thing. Here's okay. my thing. Okay. I would have liked this movie way better if someone would have taken a nice pair of scissors to it. Because, oh my fucking God, why is it this long? Jesus fucking Christ, you guys have no idea. My entire internal monologue after, like, the fucking 90-minute mark was, End, you motherfucker. End. Jesus Christ, how many times does it look like it's shaping up to fucking end? And then it just keeps fucking going. It's like Return of the King. Except even longer. Oh my god! We're talking about King's over three hours, isn't it? It doesn't feel that way. <laughs> this one feels like it's 12 hours. Damn. Jesus, so, and, and you know what? You know what fucking killed me? Go ahead. What is it? The two hour, 50 minute work? We're finally at the final climax of the movie? <laughs> Batman's hanging by a rafter, about ready to get shot in the fucking head by a shotgun, and they're trying to build up suspense. Like, yeah, we're, yeah, he's really gonna fucking kill him, sure, whatever. This fucking henchman slowly walks over, slowly opens up his shotgun, slowly loads the shell, slowly recocks it, slowly points it at his head, and it's just like, fucking move already, no wonder he gets away. I mean- Jesus, fuck. I was literally like, everyone, just everyone in this movie is like fucking zonked out on Xanax, or do they work at the DMV? Why is everyone so fucking slow? Everyone talks slow, everyone moves slow, no wonder it's this fucking long. Oh man, we did not see the same movie. Oh my god, it was agonizing, it was reads under my fingernails. So, okay, let me just, let me go, let me go down the line here. So, Dano's Riddler in comparison to any other live-action Batman villain like, I know y'all just, you know, love on Nicholson. I think Nicholson's a really good Joker. I don't think he's, I don't, he's not, he's not Mark Hamill. Like, Mark Hamill, I still think is the best Joker. Don't, you know, at me. I don't fucking care. Um, for me, Dano's Riddler, whenever, there's a scene of him in Arkham near the end of the movie. And that scene in particular, where the fact that he can just make, saying Bruce Wayne's name, Make my skin crawl. I'm like, God damn it, Paul Dano. You're you're kind of amazing. His Riddler costume, and I put costume in quotes because it's... It's a it, fucking gas mask but, and like a fucking goggle, set of goggles. It's yeah, not that impressive. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not really a costume. It's, it's very much something that you would find out of like... What that. it is, is it basically, okay, the Riddler is a fucking Redditor in this movie. <laughs> He's a hyper online, fucking self important, thinks he's smarter than every one person with like a cult of followers. That's all it is. I mean, which is, I mean, you thought of, it was fun. I thought it was fucking lame as shit, but whatever. Well, like it's it's funny to me because in like in in the Gotham that's set up here, especially as far as like his his followers, it. I've been on enough Discord chats to to see people get followings like this, and it it felt so incredibly creepy, especially in the political climate that we're in right now. I love the fact that he had people building up what he was doing as a righteous cause. And the reason that they give for his whole plan, while incredibly simple, I went, you know, I never actually kind of thought about it like that in the sense of, yeah, like Bruce Wayne lost his parents. That is fucking terrible. But he's still, you know in Wayne Manor with, you know, millions of dollars and access to anything that he wanted while, you know, Paul Dano is like in the Lego, in the Lego orphan, uh, Lego Batman movie orphanage. And like, <laughs> like, wow, no one, no one even shoots me a t-shirt. Like I actually found that. I don't want to say sad. No, it like have, it could have worked. It really could have. Like, I think that's why. So 
I mentioned to Hunter before we started recording that I'm going to draw a parallel to the Alien series. Yeah. And that's because I have not felt this hostile towards a movie since I saw Prometheus. Where I think the hype and the potential made me very angry at the execution. Because there are flashes of greatness in this. And there are... It could have worked. It really could have worked for me. It's too fucking long for one, as I think I made clear. (laughs) Second, like, this movie is entirely too impressed with itself. It thinks it's so smart and so clever and so cute. And every single... Like, they try to drive in, like, what, like, fucking five or six, like, holy shit moments. And none of them fucking drilled for me. They were just like, well, yeah, obviously. Interesting. Okay. Like, 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 throw one out. Like, so the big one for me was, uh, like finding out, like, when Bruce Wayne is for no reason vandalizing his own house with spray paint. Um, I mean, he vandalizes it with a cave. I could see him, you know, <laughs> I, 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 could, I could see I'm him. Just, I'm just saying. <laughs> anyway. But, like, where he's trying to draw these parallels between these clues, which to me were pretty fucking obvious. I don't know. I thought, here's, I guess, here's the thing. So, okay, there's this whole thing about how, like, the Riddler, um, who, which they do use his actual comic name, Edward Nashton. Yeah. I, which I, I appreciate I, it. I thought that was a very nice touch. I, I liked that they didn't do the Edward Enigma because that's, like, that shows a level of detail to the comics that I did not expect from a movie that has this bad of a misunderstanding of Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, so there's this scene where you find out that the Riddler was this orphan in this orphanage that was being sponsored by the Waynes and they pledged a bunch of money and then they got murdered a week later and he's basically mad at Bruce Wayne because Bruce Wayne got called an orphan and Bruce Wayne's not a real orphan. I'm an orphan type shit. Yeah. So I thought for sure, because prior to this, they had released that Thomas Wayne, Bruce's father had like accidentally had a journalist killed because of a mob tie I don't know. That was all stupid, too. I, we'll get into it. But um, I was like, oh, okay, so it's probably this journalist's kid. His dad died. He got sent to an orphanage. I was waiting for that reveal for seriously, like, fucking 90 minutes. Because, again, this movie is 12 hours long. Um, But they don't even actually fucking get into that. They just, no, just some random kid in a fucking orphanage that fucking Thomas Wayne once showed up at. That's the Riddler. So, I hope you're happy, fans. So honestly, I love how petty. I love how petty. Like it, that is because that falls very much in line with Riddler just as a character. Um, the whole thing with the whole like, okay, how do I want to put this? It's kind of similar to Daredevil season one for me in the sense that if you're the audience, if you're paying attention, because I think about. Maybe 90 minutes in, I kind of went, okay, I think we're going to go, like, we're going to end up here because of A, B, and C. But I try to not do that when I watch movies, because I actually like to go on the journey. But... I try to not do it, too, but when a movie's this fucking long, how can you not? (laughs) Oh, see, like, but see, that's where, like, that's why I'm actually liking the fact that you didn't like this as much. Because from the moment, this, like, the moment we get the, this hilariously whimsical music to start off with the title screen and then it goes into oh man look at this poor guy just getting off the subway and he's gonna about to get mugged like oh that fucking the whimsical sucks. music like, is ave maria i don't you know what whimsical means <laughs> all right you know that's a fair point <laughs> but but I, I i love that i love that introduction but something about dano in particular is that yes the whole taking down i would have liked dano i think if he wasn't the riddler is there someone else that, like, comes to mind that you think he... I mean, honestly, I think that it would have been... I don't know. I mean, I'm not fucking singing any praises on Jim Carrey here. <laughs> but... Oh, God, are you going to go there? Are you thinking Jim Carrey's a better Riddler? No. Okay, I was about, I was about to say, I was like, come on, Wally. <laughs> like... No, but... I don't know. Like, other than, like, he did have very clever clues and ciphers. That part was straight out of an Arkham game. That was cool. Yes, it was. It was very much out of an Arkham game. Um, but the deranged, like, the Riddler's supposed to be kind of like, he, like, the thing with the Riddler is he's not your fucking autistic Redditor who's screeching and reeing at the internet all the time. He's kind of like, he's like a, he's like your, uh, I'm a cool atheist type dude. (laughs) 
Like, I'm so much smarter than you. You have no idea. Like, <laughs> well, see, I I felt that from him as the film went on. Like, because it did feel like I mean, as the clues did get more difficult, because um, there's this one scene, and, and um, you see it in the trailer where Batman gets blown away. That is one of the most tense scenes I've seen in the Batman film because it's this one asshole because, you know, a dirty, corrupt cop. Shocker. But he... It was a DA. <laughs> DA, thank you. Um, he has this... Which, by the way, if they had made that Harvey Dent and he survived the explosion, that would have been a great sequel to another movie. Yeah, but I don't think you need to set up... You don't need to set up Dent now. I mean, I think him... I'm, being just, throw, I'm just spitballing here because I hated this movie so much I'm trying to find something I might like about it. Gosh damn it. Like, I, I think with the DA getting killed, we're clearly, like... We'll, we'll get there. But that whole sequence of him having um, Batman on the phone after he runs his car through this fucking, through this fucking funeral, which was... <laughs> The fact he almost killed this kid with a car. Did, just, just for the record, Batman did not run the car through, through the funeral. Hunter might have confused you there. No, yeah, no. So the Riddler did it, but Batman actually shows up after after that. Yeah. But that whole sequence, you're like, dude, if you had just not been a corrupt piece of shit, you wouldn't be in this jigsaw trap right now. But there were definitely shades of saw oh, all oh, throughout this movie. The, it, it it's the closest, like, yeah, it, there's definitely elements of that. Um, Jeffrey Wright's Gordon, oh my god, I... So, they get J.K. Simmons to be Commissioner Gordon in the, uh, the, 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 uh, in the Snyder's Justice League, and I love J.K. Simmons, I just wish he would have gotten more to do with the role. Um, nothing on him, just kind of the way the film broke down. Um, Wright gets a lot to do here. And I just kind of wanted to give Gordon a hug because he's just looking around like, man, all my friends are fucking corrupt. This fucking sucks. And who do I have to turn to? Oh, this vigilante that the cops are trying to hurt. That's Commissioner Gordon in a nutshell and basically every iteration, really. True. But, like, I never felt like – I haven't felt – Gary Oldman is still my favorite Commissioner Gordon. Okay. So I'll have to sleep on that because I do love Oldman's – like, I I do love his portrayal. But – I think it was the the way that like Gordon got to witness like really the fall of all these people that he you know held in such high regard. I found that really I found that really fascinating the way he kind of had to react on that uh, in the moment and the way that him and Batman actually worked together in tandem as the film goes on. So I won't lie, I didn't I I enjoyed him and Gordon working together. I hated how many scenes there were of Batman with fucking just throngs of police around him. That's just not how it goes. That's just not how it fucking works with Batman. And also, how many times did they make the same fucking joke where, like, he's in a fucking throng of policemen and one guy goes, you're gonna let him do that? Why is he here? You're gonna let him mess with the evidence? It's like, I heard this six times already. Fucking move on. No, again, a good pair of scissors to I, this fucking script. So I find that so okay. So I'm gonna ask you about the runtime because that that's that is my sticking point. I'm not gonna lie. This movie lasted 18 hours. Oh my god, it was not 18 hours. It gets pro- it's gonna get progressively longer as we go through this podcast. It started at nine. We're at 12 now. We're at 18. By the time I'm done, I'm probably gonna claim that it lasted an entire fucking you, week. That is what it felt like. It's like Battlefield Earth. That movie is well, okay. Like no, okay, no, 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 okay. Back up the bus. It is not I'm talking that runtime. Okay, I was about to say, Jesus Christ. I'm like, talking how it feels <laughs> runtime wise. I was oh, this is God. a watch checking movie. Oh my god, is it a watch checking movie? Oh, I remember I, like looking like when I thought the climax sorry, the first of like eight climaxes. I'm like, alright, I check my time. I'm like, oh my god, there's fucking Two hours left. Jesus so, fuck. so first off, what's wrong with eight climaxes? Tee Two. <laughs> it's far. In certain contexts, that's perfectly <laughs> acceptable. <laughs> Not in this one. Two. I didn't check my watch. I didn't check my watch. I mean, I haven't worn a watch in in a minute. But but your phone, my, whatever you know. What I mean. Yeah, I know. I know, I know. Old man. Old old man. Wall over here. But I. But. I wasn't watching, checking my watch at all. Like you weren't it, bored once during this movie. Are you no, kidding no, me? No, I wasn't. Like I, I literally had to fight to stay awake. Oh my god, I was so. And, okay. I, and by the way, for the record, I know this is out of character for me. If you have heard my other podcasts where I'm fucking slurring like crazy, 
I'm usually a little bit tipsy when I watch movies. I couldn't get a fucking drink at the bar at this theater. I was stone cold sober. Yeah, you were. Uh, yes, it's, Cinemark was busy last night, but, <laughs> but um, the, the first shot we see of uh, of Batman come into into frame out of darkness. No, fucking again, the first five minutes are perfect. Um, fucking wonderful. Um, this is the most fluid. Like, and let, let's be clear. I feel like Matt Reeves definitely sat down, played Arkham City for like three days. Was like, oh man, I'm gonna totally just like take a lot of the moves you can do from there and implement them to my bat. Like, it's- I will say the action is great. Like the fight scenes are great. There's not a whole bunch of that bullshit like uh, frame uh, ridiculous cuts. No, because this could have been. That's my biggest complaint about the Nolan series is the yeah. action is awful. It could have been cut like a Bourne film very easily, and it's it's not thankfully. So no, you can tell that they um, put a lot of effort into the fight choreography, and um, it's very sleek as far as how. Yes. Like, and, and, and actually, I will say that is one thing. Even in the bad uh, DC movies, I will say that DC does fight scenes better than Marvel for that exact reason. Hmm. They let the hits land. Like, even in um, Batman vs. Superman, which sucks, that warehouse scene is so much more brutal and oh, well-cut that, that and great. well-choreographed than any fight scene I think I've seen in a Marvel film. Yeah, I, I won't go there if you because the Captain America films exist, but I, I love that warehouse scene. That is probably Snyder's best directed scene, not involving owls. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but the, the action in this is genuinely impressive. Uh, I want to get to Zoe to Zoe Kravitz because was an excellent Selena title. She was a genuinely excellent Selena because because let's be real. So I think Michelle Pfeiffer like kind of gets the uh, kind of gets the shaft. Um, I, no, I, think I, Mitchell, I, I love Michelle ahead. Pfeiffer. I'm sorry. She's she's great at Catwoman. I think they actually are in the same vein. They both get what the character is. Yes. She's a uh, kind of hyper-aggressive, hyper-stealthy, hyper-manipulative. Yep. Like, But at the same time, there's like that vulnerability beneath the surface. Both of them nail that perfectly, I think. Um, I think that Catwoman's weird ass backstory in this was completely unnecessary. I'm not gonna lie. I, so okay, so that that I will give you. Like I, I was able to follow it, but it, it, it could have been streamed out a little bit. I, I I will give you that. Um her her reasoning for kind of getting to like the into the fold as it were uh is because her fresh best friends gets killed. And I'm gonna be real, um hearing that phone call I was like, oh, this is some like unsolved mystery shit, and this is really bumming me out. But oh, that was that was pretty disturbing. I'm not gonna lie. Which I was actually waiting for them. Like, I'm surprised it was this random Russian chick because in the comics and in other movies, um, Selena Kyle, when she's working kind of as a escort sex worker or whatever, since Frank Miller made her that, that's all anyone ever wants to write her as. Um, mm-hmm. But she has this um, younger kind of like. Oh god, ward is a weird word, but this 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 underling that yeah. she kind of takes responsibility for named Holly. I thought for sure it was going to be Holly. Um, uh, you might have seen it in the Catwoman short, or you might have seen it yeah. in like Batman Year One. But like, she has this like young kind of sort of trafficked friend that she tries to keep out, like, keep her eyes out for. I thought for sure it was going to be Holly. It, it felt like they were kind of going there, but they don't really like. I, I think they just didn't want to get that dark. It's PG thirteen. Yeah, but but how do I put? With saying she's Russian, with saying how she was hanging out in the iceberg lounge, like they definitely kind of leave the breadcrumbs there if you want to connect Sex that dot. Yeah. yeah, but that that might have been a line that DC was like, ah, eh, we can't go there. But but to your point, I was kind of sitting there thinking the same thing. Like you're like you're you're almost turning on that street. Like are you going to complete the loop? And they're kind of like. Eh, so yeah, she was almost a character in the movie. I because it's it 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 felt very um oh what's that movie from the nineties um like broken down palace like it it fairly felt like they were gonna kind of go there and then they kind of stopped short but yeah but that f- honestly an R rating would have benefited this movie as well as like sixty minutes shaved off the runtime um but I don't think you can make I I don't think you're allowed to make a, a radar Batman film. I, I just I just don't like why not. Ask DC. I don't like. I would love a rated R Batman film, but I just. Well, I you think, sh- it should be allowed. Is all I'm saying. Oh no, I don't disagree with you, but I think that because, and I, I, I really wish that people kind of would 
reference Deadpool more in this sense and go, I've rated our film. Fuck Blade, you know, like like a rated R superhero film can be, you know, can be profitable. Blade is always my answer to people like, oh, you know, Black Panther, the first. Oh no! Like I like superhero. I'm like, like I'm a, I always stand for Blade. I love oh, abso- Blade movies, oh, even absolutely. even the bad ones. I don't know. Just as a kid, I think they're just too fundamental. To oh me. oh, absolutely. Because yeah, like I mean, look, I, I've sung my praise about Black Panther. It's fucking wonderful. But I fucking love Blade. I own the 4K. I fucking love Blade. But this is one of those times where I think pushing it as far as you do with PG-13. No, is, they did is, a great job. Like, like again, this is a legit PG-13. Like like yeah, like it, it's it's. It's really dark, like shockingly so at points. Uh, Pattinson's Pattinson's voiceover is actually my favorite voiceover for a Batman film, not starring Kevin Conroy. <laughs> Just before anyone I jumps on me, I actually second that. Um, Pattinson's voiceovers are really good for this movie. They are. Pattinson himself, I think you and I are also going to disagree on. Ah, uh, here we go. Go ahead. You can go first. <laughs> I don't think he's a good Bruce Wayne, which is crazy. Okay. Because I think he's fine under the mask mm-hmm. for the most part. You know, there are a couple lines where I'm just like, eh. But when he's Bruce Wayne, here's the thing. Even uh, Year One got this right, which is both a comic and a movie based on Frank Miller. Yeah. Bruce Wayne is smart enough to know the importance of being Bruce Wayne. Yeah. In public. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because obviously if there's like a vigilante that shows up with your jawline and, you know, you're never, you're never to be seen and you, like, that's like one thing I'll give credit to the Dola movies for is basically he has to sacrifice his public image yeah, to keep his secret identity alive. And in this movie, he doesn't do that at all. And also... There's not enough Alfred in this movie. So, and okay. And Andy Serkis is such a good fucking actor. I'm very upset about that. So, we'll... Okay. So, here's the thing of Alfred. I I agree with you, but it doesn't bother me. And the reason why it doesn't bother me is because I think for all the elements that are at play here, Alfred is actually the one that you can use the most sparingly. Um, I disagree. I, I think he's vital to any Batman movie. But see, I think he's vital in the in the first bits as far as helping him like solve the riddles, which is actually how many something... lines does he have? Ten? Oh, he has more than that. Bullshit. He definitely has more than that. Like he has like six lines just talking about like the first riddle, like and in and the hospital. I'm talking they have about a char- like well in a character building sense. Okay. You get a couple like where it's like you're not my dad, you are my dad type shit, but like yeah. no, Alfred is a very important character, especially to Bruce Wayne. Yeah. And Bruce Wayne basically hardly exists in this movie. And he doesn't when he's there, you don't really get much of a sense of like character? I don't know. I I thought it's not Pattinson's fault. Again, I think the first of all, the script needed a rewrite or okay. two. Okay. Um, the editor needed a stronger pair of scissors. <laughs> I, I, in fact, do they even have an editor? Did they get one from Wish? Why I guess, is this movie oh this fucking gosh. long? So, it, it, it gets, I'm moving on from that. Circus, for me, in this, I, I think he's used, like, I could have used more Circus, but I always want more Andy Circus. Um, I think for where the plot is... I think Circus gets enough. Again, I could have used more, but it didn't detract or, like, take away from the film for me. The scene that they have... Actually, wait, I'm saying full... We said full spoilers already. The scene that they have in the hospital genuinely broke my heart because it's... it's Because it's... Because it is that moment that I think most people have where you kind of go, oh, my parents were, like, people who fucked up and made mistakes and oh like it's almost like that that shatter moment where you kind of go oh fuck okay no and- that's fine and i think that was a vital scene but why was it so long again i'm sorry can you not acknowledge that here's the thing slow moments and slow like movements and conversations can be very powerful yeah. But when every single thing does that, it eventually loses its luster. Like, if everyone talks in this super slow pace, if everyone moves in this super slow way, you just start to get impatient. It doesn't It doesn't have the meaning. So, um, what's, uh, what's a good example in terms of Bruce and Alfred? Well, in terms of Bruce in general. So, here's the thing. 
uh, Batman actually spends, again, I said earlier, a lot of times in throngs of police. Yeah. And they all have the same conversation every fucking time, but whatever. Anyways, um, but, like, even when he moves, like, even if he's grabbing an envelope or just, like, saying a line, it seriously takes so much time. And then you cut to establishing shots of other characters that have already been established for no reason. Um, the climax, I think, is a perfect... The actual climax. Sorry. They're, again, there are fucking ten in this movie. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Giggle your ass off. Anyways. Um, so, like, at the end of the movie, you know, again, I, I went into, like, how Batman's about to get shot in the face. You know who yeah. saves him is Catwoman. Yeah. Here's the thing. They had already showed Catwoman arriving on her motorcycle. Then, like, as this is happening and he's dangling, they have to cut to her again, looking up at him for a solid... 10 seconds, glancing over to ladder, glancing back at him, and then just like, I get it. I get it. Okay, that didn't... You already already showed her at the scene. You could have just had her appear. That didn't bother me, but okay, fair enough. Um, I I will say, like, if you don't like that slow talking, like, this is... This is a film... This is a film noir Batman film, and... This is labor to sit through. I just... I didn't feel the labor. Like, like, this is... I'm actually, I, I'm honestly happy that you didn't like it from this perspective of like this will make for this makes for a fun review. <laughs> but but it's one of those things where I was sitting there and look, three hour movies, and I have to put it like this because you know like I've talked about Martin Scorsese and I, how I think The Irishman is just way too goddamn long, but I can sit through something like Silence and and be enthralled. I I can't tell people if a three hour runtime is too long for them. Because it, it, depend, it, it depends on the entertainment going on. For me, this was three hours, and it felt like fucking two weeks. Yeah. So, it, but your but, mileage will vary. It, it, it will, and it's one of those ta- those these rare cases where it's like I understand that you know, like I would love people to go out and support this movie because I think it's a great, uh, it's an incredible film. But this is on streaming on April nineteenth, so you're what we're like forty four days away. So it's like. If if you have a weak bladder, or <laughs> or you just are like COVID still thing, or I don't want to. You know, I'll, maybe I was primed to kind of dislike this movie. For okay. one, because I couldn't get a fucking drink at the bar. <laughs> you know, see, if you have a couple of drinks and you watch this in April, you're gonna be like, oh my god, this is wonderful. Oh, shut <laughs> up. Second. The at the start time for the movie was listed at seven forty. It did not start until fucking like eight ten. It was all fucking bullshit, fucking commercials and fucking. And I love trailers. Don't get me wrong, but hey, I expect the trailers to start at seven thirty. If the movie starts at seven forty, <laughs> I'm so. Am I fuck? Am I old? Am I naive? What oh, am I doing? Oh, wrong? see, I've, what am I've, I doing here? I, I've been I've been doing this for long enough to know that I usually have about a twenty minute buffer to before I actually have to sit down. Why because... the fuck were you so worried? I was gonna. I, because I know you, and sometimes you get distracted. <laughs> you get the house late. Jesus like, Christ! But anyways, um, but so yeah, that was that bracketed the uh, start of my experience. Yeah. So I couldn't get a drink. You know, and the food fucking sucks at the theater, so I didn't get anything to eat. So I'm just sitting there, <laughs> not drinking or eating anything. It's late as fuck. I'm tired as shit. I'm hungry as shit. I'm fucking kind of dozing as these people just drone on about shit I can't possibly give a fuck about. So, you know, I'm going to actually challenge you to rewatch this at home then, because it sounds like if you I could actually... I will never rewatch this movie. I really? Can't. I don't have that fucking time in my day. <laughs> Damn, okay. Like, because it's... Cause I, I would I, rather watch Suicide Squad twice, because it's still less of a runtime than this fucking monstrosity. It, it is not. I'll put you at about four hours and 30... Uh, about 4.30? Suicide Squad is not too hours long. Okay, I'm I'm Alright, I can't wait to I can't wait to say I told you so because it's my favorite thing to do. Let me let's go here. Suicide squad look at that two hours three minutes. Jesus fuck. What did I say? I was only four minutes off. One and a half suicide squads. But so getting getting the final thoughts here, um and, and I, it, Here, hold on. I know I've been a fucking hater. Let me say the other things that I liked about this okay. movie. Again, the first five minutes is absolutely perfect in terms of how it introduces Batman and what uh, what he's become to the city of Gotham, which is basically quintessential Batman. 
basically any criminal who sees that signal in the sky just kind of shrinking back and and just waiting to be attacked. Yeah. That's perfect. Uh, Zoe Kravitz. Yep. Her backstory is weird as shit, but she nails the character Michelle Pfeiffer style. She gets what she's supposed to be. Yep. She's got the physicality. She's got the build. She's got the uh, the facial and emotional range to make it work. Um, the action is really good. The fight scenes are well choreographed. There's a car chase scene that is expertly shot. Oh, it's so good. Expertly. Yep. Um, especially when you compare it to uh, Begins and The Dark Knight. I think this is probably the best Batman chase scene. As far as the aesthetic... Ow. High praise, okay. As far as the aesthetic goes, I really like how it blends old, tiny, like, in terms of, like, you know, you can tell this is kind of a rudimentary bat suit. Yes, You it can is. kind of tell that, like, his Batmobile has callbacks to the animated series in terms of, like, the hood and, like, the, the shape of the car and all that. I don't know the fucking cars, but whatever. Yeah. Um, you can tell that, like, uh, the Gotham itself... Uh, the way that they did the city is probably my favorite Gotham City yeah. I've seen in live action. Because I know in The Dark Knight, they basically just kind of did a bunch of shit around Chicago, which looked good. It looked great. But this one has a lot more personality they shot, the city. Yeah, they shot in London and Switzerland. Yeah, um, no, it, it looks really, really good. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, the soundtrack is good until it wears itself out because you'll get tired of listening to it. Um, you won't. <laughs> I can't believe we had such polar opposites. Oh, no, I know. I find it fascinating, like, because, like, I, I don't know, like, normally, like, I've already been yelling at people who don't like this, but you're such a DC fan, I'm just like, okay, like, if you don't like it, that's, I mean... I just don't think they understand the Bruce Wayne Batman thing. I think it's very jarring to see Batman in so many throngs of people. It's just not his, it's just, it's just not his thing. He He doesn't do that. I know what they're trying to do. I know they're trying to make a more, like, hopeful conclusion where he's, like, helping people in the city and he's working with the police and everything. But, like, it's just, I ke- I just, I kept waiting for him to vanish every time there's, like, a bunch of police around him. And it just never happened. And it just felt awkward to me. I don't know. I, I actually like seeing Batman, you know, save people. <laughs> he barely <laughs> saved anyone. This entire movie is Batman failing upwards. He didn't save shit. I mean. The fucking seawall blew. I mean, the, you know, the flare he led, you know, all those people out of the. You know the, the you know their watery tombs. After, after, but, they, after they after they were fucked over, he helped him out. Sure. I, I mean, I mean, hey, he did more than his dad. <laughs> he did, there was some cool detective stuff in this movie again until it wore itself out. Um, this is a movie that is very proud of its own cleverness, and I don't really like it. <laughs> All right, so where do you land on the grade? Five out of ten. Letter grades only. So, what D. D? A D. Wow. Okay. Um, I am going to say a few other things I enjoyed about it. Uh, we didn't talk too much about Colin Farrell, but wait, the- fucking Colin Farrell was the penguin. Did you not know that? How many prosthetics was that dude wearing? Uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't recognize him at all. Yeah, Colin Farrell fucking crushed it as uh, as Cobblepot. I, 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 I love I, that he did a bullseye impression at some point. I, I, I god damn it. He, <laughs> but he he was great, and I'm very curious what a Penguin HBO Max series looks like. Um, I thought, all of the actors were very good, in my opinion. It's the script that let him down, and the editing. Uh, but Fer- Farrell's absolutely great uh, in the role. Um, uh, Wally mentioned it here just a second ago. The car chase that they have is fucking is fucking wonderful. Um, you get a taste of it in the uh, one of the trailers, but here just seeing it from start to finish, um, even the sound the, the Batmobile makes when it starts up, I was just like, oh yeah, that's the stuff. Like give me give me more of this, Matt Reeves. Um, I normally am so back and forth on John Turturro because I still remember him stripping down those boxers and those Transformers movies and how that really pissed me off. By but the way, you have nothing. You you all have no one but yourselves to blame. Not enough of you saw Miller's Crossing. Now he whores himself, himself out for any blockbuster that comes a knocking. I mean, you're not you're you're not wrong, but but uh, hit him and Pattinson get to have you know that co- that conversation 
later on in the film that I just absolutely sorry my voice cracked. I, apparently, I'm hitting puberty, but 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 that scene in particular made me incredibly happy. And this is the most uh, the reason I'm comparing this more than Mask of the Phantasm is because for actually you know let me backtrack that a little bit. While this is definitely heavily influenced at, at points by Mask of the Phantasm by Year One by Long Halloween. Um, really, the Batman tell- Telltale game is actually what I kept coming back to from... The, Holy shit, I didn't f- make that connection. You're totally right. But, but like, from a perspective of... Uh, I usually am. But uh, from a perspective of uh, a Bruce Wayne who's like, oh, man, my parents really fucked me over. Like, oh, shit, this sucks. And even um, how his rogues gallery is kind of established because indirectly because of the sins of his parents. Um, they they call out the Arkans in here, which I thought was a very, like, kind of a quick kind of sort of mention, but I was like, okay, they're, I, we're going to come back to that um, most likely in, in the uh, sequel, because this will for damn sure get a sequel. Yeah, this movie um, tries to both corruptify and deify the Waynes, and it comes off a little bit weird. Well, see, like, I, I, I find, I mean, I think that's just politics in general. Like, well, honestly, yeah, I mean, so. you still, you still see people doing that today. Is just yeah. like, oh yeah, you know, team A, team B. Yeah, and it's, it's for me, it was fascinating to watch that because, like, you know, like Bruce flat out didn't know, and so when he is confronted with the fact that, hey, you know, your dad, to to uh, Alfred's point, was a good man, but he made a horrible mistake. You go. Yeah, it kind of only takes one, especially in politics, and seeing Bruce have to deal with that those ramifications, especially when it comes to Fal- uh, to Falcone, um, it's very. Did it bother you to keep calling him Falcone? Yeah, I that, I, I will say that did bother me because I'm like it's Falcone, like it, it's yeah. it's like in it's Ven- an Italian name, chill out. It's like in Venom when they said symbiotes, and I was like, it's symbi what what no, like uh, yeah, it, that did bother me. I, that is one that is one thing. It's that's such a nitpick, but it does bother me because I'm like Falcone, Carmine just, Falcone, like, like say it because because I kept hearing Falcone, I kept thinking Captain Falcon. <laughs> I was like, it's not Captain, it's like it's Falcone, Falcone like like come on, like yeah. That did bother me. I, I will fully acknowledge that. But the Batman Telltale games really did feel as much of a template for this as the long Halloween did. And just the more, even to how the suit actually looks, which is pretty cool. But um, again, the suit is one of those things that kind of has like an almost old timey year one look to it. But yeah. then there's, there's the hyper modern part of it too. Like he's got these contact lenses that, you know, which I totally believe Batman would have to allow him to record everything he sees. So there's like these, it's almost like a steampunk in that way, where it's like yeah. a mix of super high tech versus kind of the super retrograde old timey style. I The style of this movie was not the problem. The cinematography was fucking brilliant. Again, editing and writing and fucking, there's so much shit that could be cut. Oh my god. So, um, kind of lost my train of Sorry. thought. No, you're fine. You're um, welcome. Um, but yeah, the Batman, but, but the Batman Telltale, uh, e- even with the lenses, um, that's something something I really appreciate is that Batman can go a little 007-ish with how many fucking gadgets he has, but it's actually pretty simplified here. And for a year, year two Batman, it should be simplified. Um, the fact that he's keeping journals and all this shit on everything that's like going on in Gotham, I was like, yeah, that's actually, considering you don't have a giant back computer yet, which, again, you should not, uh, <laughs> I really appreciate kind of the the simplicity. Um, it, it's something that bothered the shit out of me in The Dark Knight, because it, it just is very clear that no one hates the fucking Batcave. Why, I don't understand. For but, the record, you don't see much Bruce Wayne in this movie. Y- you don't. But but for, for what... Um, but as far as how he operates, I found that to be incredibly fascinating. Just the fact that it's, you know, a camera in a, you know, in a con in a contact lens. The, but this, these very simple things that build to w- the mythos that we will most likely get down the road. Um, where a lot of chess pieces are set up as far as uh, Penguin's rise to power, the fact that the Riddler is in Arkham, but meets, you know, a new friend. Uh, um, and <laughs> not a fan of that. Huh? That seems stupid. 
<laughs> um, I know a couple people who even love this movie who who weren't crazy about that scene. I don't mind the scene. Like, I, it didn't take me out of the movie or anything. Um, I, I will be the first to admit, Batman has an incredible rogues gallery. Could we get some, like... If we want to save Joker for the third Batman film, cool. But this movie feels so much like they're going Court of Owls, Court of Owls. And I'm like, okay, if we kind of abandon setting up Court of Owls for the sequel, that is going to actually really bother me. because Dude, it, the, it, the setup for Court of Owls is weak as fuck, because I also got that vibe. But then they abandoned it, like, fucking eight hours in. And <laughs> the next eight hours, they didn't talk about it again. So I think I, I think with the mob ties and everything, um, as far as, like, uh, as far as uh, relating to his dad, I could easily see them going Court of Owls still, because I think there's still more that they could they could dig into. In terms um, of comic fans, I think you're going to have a very hard time selling anything that has to do with Thomas and Martha Wayne being corrupt, because that's just not what fans of the character want. Ow, that hurt. Um, but, <laughs> that looks like it hurt. <laughs> that was not a great feeling. I just elbowed my desk. But, uh, <laughs> I'll leave that in. But, um, yeah, as far as a Batman film, because, I, again, I, I've been going through and I've been rewatching them. I, I don't know if I like this more Mask of the Phantasm. I don't know. know I I <laughs> I don't know if I like this more than actually oh god, is that the only one? You don't like it better than anything. I <laughs> Uh, um, I I feel like Padme in uh in Revenge of the Sith. It's like, Wally, you're breaking my heart. Like, <laughs> it's, it's like but but look, y'all, like I'll watch I, it again, maybe with a drink in me. I, we'll see I, if I, I like it better. But I don't hold your breath, people. <laughs> I I think this movie is highly overrated. Entirely too impressed with itself. Completely overwritten, very tedious. Hey, you gave your hey, you gave your review my turn, but but yeah, this is one of those films that one once it started, I sat back and went, all right, because again, I still am a little gun shy about you know DC stuff. I mean, we've got the Flash coming up. We'll see how they fuck that up, um, and and we'll see how little Dwayne Johnson cares about Black Adam. Very uh, Allen, who cares? Uh, uh, um, I goddamn. Oh yeah, you like Wally West more anyway. But um, the moment this movie started, from the moment it ended, I was just like, "Yep, I am here for this." Um, this is one of my favorite scores. In a film, I will be buying this on vinyl. I look very forward to buying this on vinyl. Um, I think Robert Pattinson. Um, if 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 I had a hat, I I'd, I'd, I'd be tipping it <laughs> to, to you, good sir. I thought you were uh, great in this. Um, I, I, Paul, I actually had a nightmare about the riddle last night. <laughs> I was actually like the opening shot of him. I was like, "Oh Jesus Christ!" I I genuinely had a nightmare. It woke me up at six a.m. this morning. Uh, Paul Dano, like, God, I thought you being mean to slaves was being the worst thing you do. Uh, but, <laughs> but terrorizing Gotham might be as bad. Yeah, I, I, you, what? <laughs> but, but his Riddler is, is fucking horrifying. One of my favorite villains. Um, it, he. When I think about favorite comic book villains, you know, I mean, you know, you got you got your Jokers, your Killmongers, your Wyatt Russells. I, I just, I absolutely love, I absolutely love his version of the Riddler here, and I, I cannot wait to see more of that character. Um, you know, I, I we talked about Kravitz, we talked about Wright, we talked about Farrell. Um, I can't wait to see what this world expands to. Um, I, I really can't. I, I, again, I'm worried about the rest of the DC films that are coming out this year. Like, I, I'm just to be very blunt. But hey, you got Superman, Lois. Watch that. Um, this is for me a tour de force of Matt Reeves. I'm sad because I know we probably won't get another one of these for like four years. Um, they said it will be it will be under five years, but. That could be right at the five year mark, considering how busy Pattinson and Kravitz are. But uh, yeah, I I don't have a choice to give this anything but a fan a fan fucking tastic. So you have two very opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> you have a you have a D and a fan fucking tastic. And but and by the, the way, I am a DC shill through and through. Oh 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 oh, you are. But I, I like let me just I, I really need to throw this out there. 
Three hours is a long time for a movie. Like, it, like straight up. Can you like, admit like, that there was a couple scenes that could have been cut? I think you got. I think you could have gotten this down to two forty. Yeah, easily. Yeah, I think you got this down to two forty. But I didn't feel the runtime. But again, you're you're talking to someone who had who owns like a lot of movies and just is kind of used to this rhythm in general. So if you're not a big movie watcher. Maybe wait for this on HBO Max, and I and I and, I and ha- have your have your finger ready on the skip button. I just or the one point or watch it at one point five speed. Uh, <laughs> but I I have to throw that qualifier out, despite how much I I love this film because a three a three hour film is just hard to sell to audiences in general. Um, No Way Home I think is what two like two hours maybe two forty five ish maybe. Like it's it's a hard sell just in general. Like I, I I have to put that out there. So for people who go, you know, like disclaimer, I don't mind long movies. I mind movies that feel long and are long. Okay, so so no no, and and, and that's and that's fair. But just for general audiences, because I mean, yeah. I like I I have to put that out there because I know some people have complained about the runtime, but I also know those people don't watch a ton of movies. So so like to your point, I know you watch a lot of shit, but. For general audiences, like just be aware of that because I think that is a fair book a day off work. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, the show to work, you know, five hours late. But but just just be aware of that. So if you you know if you don't want to be out in public right now with that many people, I mean, I'll be real. I bought an extra uh, seat just so no one would be the like would be close to us, which was wonderful. By the way, like we had oh uh, we had room to stretch out. It was great last night, but. But kind of know yourself in that sense. Like, if you think you can get through a three-hour movie and not have to get up, then cool, this might work for you. But if it doesn't, this is out April 19th on HBO Max. You know, you can watch it from your home, pause it, smoke a bowl. I mean... I'd love to know that I'm not crazy because all I've heard is praise of this movie and I just, I feel like I'm kind of taking... Pills because I really, really didn't like it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh wait, are you not? Uh, but <laughs> no, <I'm> not. <laughs> but I mean, this is 90- I self medicate with alcohol. Thank you. That that is fair. Um, yeah, this is ninety one percent from audience scores. Like you're kind of in the minority on this. Like, so. like how- I, I I can't tell you how much I wanted to like this movie. I, how excited I was for it. How much I loved the beginning. Like I can't. I'm not coming from a place like I you like you think I went in guns charging wanting to no, no, no. apart. I honestly don't, no. Like I I'm surprised how much I don't like this movie. Again, it reminds me a lot of when I saw Prometheus in theaters, how hyped I was for that movie and how I just fucking was pissed when I left that theater. So it's interesting because I like Prometheus. I'm not in love with it. It's like a C plus B minus for me. Covenant I hate way more, personally. So. Prometheus I well, Covenant I knew was going to be bad going in, but Prometheus I was very excited for because I love the Alien series. Same. The fir- the first two are probably like what really kind of got me into movies in the first place. Honestly, my dad let me watch the first Alien, and I was like nine, which uh, you should. Uh, which is no, do. do not let your nine year old watch Alien. Like that shit bursting, out, that changed me forever, guys. That's one. That's one of the best one two combos though. And, to then start a- a and then Aliens was just a fucking blast from start to finish. I loved that movie. Fucking was it Paxton? Paxton, yeah, yeah. He's so funny. R. R. R- I. P. Sir, like our, Bill, pa- Bill- our patron saint of cowards. Yeah, I fucking Bill Paxton's so great in that. But but yeah, like I just know yourself as far as like what you can handle as far as runtime. Um, this... For anyone who does have issues with runtime, just wait for it to come out on stream. Honestly, you can pause yeah. and, and kind of digest as you need to. Yeah, I would say that. And seriously, don't take your goddamn kids to this. Like, seriously. Like, I w- I w- it would have fucked me up if I saw this when I was, like, fucking, like, a young kid. I like, saw... We saw some seven-year-olds there. Which, by yeah. the way, how did they sit through this motherfucker? I, I, I so, so, those, yeah, to those kids who, like, those kids, was, yeah, there was only, like, those three kids that got up, but I didn't no, really No, there see. was, like, fucking seven or eight. The kids, oh, I, was on, I was on the edge row. So oh, I that's right, because they ran ball. by you. Yeah. Yeah. Like parade. <laughs> yeah, the good, good job, kids. But, I mean, good job, parents. What am I talking about? The kids didn't know any better. Parents, be better, but. Yeah, um, those kids are bored as I was. I just, <laughs> they probably had their. They're Game Boys or they're oh guys sound old. Oh god, yeah, you know. 
they, in your Tamagotchi. Yeah, and they. Your Game Boy. Yeah, they. They have their Polly Pockets with them. In your marbles. <laughs> in your pogs. <laughs> but. <laughs> God, no, God, whatever happened to Pogs? That was, that was a while ago. But, anyways, I digress. But this, yeah, I, I will be curious to see what this finishes at because it's trending for uh, like a you know what? 150 million dollar opening i'm sure there? it's gonna go completely you know off the rails people are gonna love it. everyone loves it but me is what i'm seeing for these percentages <laughs> i mean yeah the, 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 per- the percentages are not in your favor yeah it's a lot That's of fine. you know i'm not doing it to be contrarian oh, I, I, know. I wanted to like this movie um but you know what i will say this as someone who loves dc most of the well some of the time, a little bit of the time. Okay, you know what? DC fucking sucks editorial wise. <laughs> anyways, sorry. Anyways, anyway, as someone who loves the characters that DC once created and has committed themselves to ruining, um, God damn. <laughs> I want to see them do well and make good stories. There we go. Fair. Um, yeah, and I'll I'll just say this real quick in closing. Let's get other characters established as established outside of Batman. Like that'd be cool. Like, or are we supposed to get that Green Lantern show? Is that supposed to be a thing? Like, can I get news on like these other characters? Like, give me a Titans that doesn't suck. Yeah, that would. Yeah, I mean, you have Young Justice. I mean, that's kind of in Teen Mm. Titans Go. Like, Teen Titans Go. Teen Titans Go. Really? You like Teen Teen Titans Go movies? Really? I like the uh, the references they make, but I don't know. It just feels like a slap in the face after like it's like this. Instead of having a serious show about the characters you love, you get this fucking parody, fucking cartoony bullshit. I uh, uh, okay, you know that's fair, but it it is a fun show. But I mean, like Raven's my favorite DC character, by the way. Yeah, then then, don't do it dirty all the time, especially in the comics. Yeah, don't don't watch Titans (laughs) if you're a fan of Raven. That 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 show does her no favors, but. Uh, Batman, everyone, have you seen it? What'd you think of it? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Um, Tell Hunter he's wrong and that I'm right. Uh, you, you don't do that. You don't need to do that. <laughs> but, but, uh, you can go ahead and follow us on wherever you listen to podcasts, SoundCloud, Apple, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, to name a few at The Real Pineapple. You can follow yours truly on Twitch, because that's what I'm going to be on, since I will not be recording new reviews. Exactly, Cat. You can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash jhunterrealpineapple, and you can find me on Twitter at uh, jhunterrealpineapple. And don't forget to like us on Facebook at The Real Pineapple and Real Pineapple Games. I will have a review up for the new Pixar film Turning Red uh, coming up this week. Uh, That is already recorded because, again, no work for me. Uh, But everyone, please stay safe out there. Um, Take care of each other. Get your COVID shot for fuck's sake if you have not done that yet. Um, Watch this movie. I I, I, Like, honestly, whether you end up loving it or hating it. Watch it for free. I... (laughs) Or the, I we the the real panel does not endorse <laughs> does not endorse the thoughts of our guests. But stay safe out there, everyone. Um, seriously, stay safe out there. Um, there's a lot going on, but stay safe out there. But uh, Wally, thank you so much for uh, for being on. I appreciate you, even though your opinion is wrong. But uh, everyone, <laughs> thank you so much for your support. We'll talk to you soon.